Hello, and welcome to a cast interview for Valmont, the Black Raven Chronicles, exclusive to Patreon members. I am the Vampire Queen Jacqueline Burns, and I am joined today by Riley Dwyer, voice to Daniel Mickelson. Mr. Dwyer, how are you today? I'm doing quite all right. It's uh, it's 12 o'clock. I am just waking up from a night shift, and let me tell you, the caffeine is certainly helping. You can imagine it does. Were you able to get it over at Bob's place? Well, considering <laughs> the fact that I'm kind of stuck in the underworld, I usually need Cyrus to come over and, here's your caffeine. Now, give us a stuff. <laughs> Well, then hopefully there'll be plenty of stuff for you after this. <laughs> Either that or I'm going to get us all in a massive amount of trouble. Fucking oh, Christina, just like, know. who let these two assholes work on a project together? Me. I'm the asshole. <laughs> so, I guess to start that off with, most of, our fr- most of our fans have had no opportunity to really hear you, considering that your vocal lines don't really start until episode 6, and when we haven't even done a table read for that. We haven't even really talked about when we're going to do a table read for that. So, what do you want people to know about how you're going to portray Daniel, before we kind of get into where you got your media talents from? So, when it comes to actually being able to portray Michael, it, it kind of reminded me of one show that I used to watch when I was a bit younger, though admittedly, I probably was a bit too young to be watching it, but hey, if you could sneak to watch a show you really liked, and everyone was doing it. It was a show called Lost Girl, and it was filmed and directed here in Canada. It actually used a lot of different religions and belief systems and mythologies where basically every known supernatural being was in there. And one of the characters was named Dyson. And he, he was a werewolf. And his portrayal was very gruff, but also you could see the tenderness in his eyes whenever like someone he cared about was in danger or he felt off about a particular situation. And I'm just thinking, you know what, I could probably use that as like a baseline because it just felt like it could... Yeah, you were certainly able to get that tenderness out, <laughs> and everything will be fine for the person who has to play opposite you as Rose. I'm fucked. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Well, as just being assumed in so many different forms of media, kind of like all blended together, so I had to pick, 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 somehow match them together to make this work. And so far, I hope I'm doing a good job, because this is the first time I've ever done a even semi-professional voice acting role. I mean, I'd say it's pretty professional. I'm not sure if you had a chance to really listen to anything, particularly like the first episode, even just the rough draft version of it. But no, this is a... For the fact that a lot of us are first-timers or have very limited experience for what we do have, there's a lot of professionalism going into it. But you've also got a lot of people who have done things in media and are just taking that and adapting it. So it tends to work out pretty darn well. So obviously you mentioned uh, Lost Girl being the basis for how you kind of created this role for the prime werewolf, the alpha above alphas. How does it make you feel to really take on this role? And what are you hoping to bring to it further down the line? It certainly is um, intimidating because it's just like you hear like, oh, by the way, your character is like the boss boss. And I'm just like, excuse me, I'm the what? You're, you're, you're making me the, the boss of all the all these. Were- really? Yeah, it, it's definitely intimidating, but also extremely like heartwarming because it's just like, oh, you think I'm good enough for this? Oh, hell, that's the thing, is that I was just sitting there like, you know, I wonder if I could get Sinner in on this, and just like, he'd be perfect for Daniel. Uh-huh. Brought you in, showed Boss, uh, or told Boss to audition you, and then eventually I wound up showing him the clip, and he's just like, I'm sorry, this is my prime werewolf? Holy fuck. Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, sorry, what was the what was the rest of the question? I'm kind of blanking out right now. I mean, it was really just, like, what kind of got you ready for it and how you're feeling about it, uh, what you're hoping to bring to the role would probably be the best way to put it. Well, as far as bringing to the role would just, frankly, bringing the best that I could possibly, like, give out, because it's, like... I want people, I'm a very quality over quantity kind of guy. So if you look at my TikTok and compare it to someone like Jordan is on the internet, no shade to her. She is absolutely talented and she is great because she's able to actually produce good content and a lot of it. But me, I get in my own head so often that I am re-recording, rewriting, redoing everything over and over again because I got this inner idiot in the back of my head that's always going, you know, that wasn't good enough, idiot. And it's just like, mm. 
Oh, no, that, 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 that's a major thing. Because like I said, last night I was working on, because Christina's got a whole meet the cast or meet the crew type of thing going up. Thank you to our Patreons for deciding on that one. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, how many takes is this going to take me to get it right? Because I couldn't hold the fucking script up in front of my face while I'm doing this. I'm like, I'm a voice actor. I'm not supposed to be seen. I'm supposed to hold the script in front of my face and read it to the fucking mic. <laughs> Plus, who wants to see this ugly mug? Uh, mm, well, I mean, I definitely wouldn't mind seeing that ugly mug, especially right after, uh, what was it? So who wants daddy's belt? <laughs> Sir? Oh, gee. The amount of comments I've gotten from that line alone, I'm just like, y'all are some thirsty bitches. Can you blame us? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I guess not. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'll, I'll fully and readily admit, that is not the line that gets me so fucking thirsty from you. Oh, boy. Please do tell. <laughs> Honey, Kitty's claws are out. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> When that goes out. Oh, as soon as I saw your reaction to that. Oh, man. I'm just like, what if I did? Well, that's why it is. I said, I've got to play opposite to this. I'm supposed to somehow, like, I had to re-record my lines because I'm just like, oh, oh, the lines that come out of Rose's mouth have to include at least a little bit of, eh, eh, excuse me, the bar counter is looking empty. Why don't you just put me up there for a minute? Uh, John, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to you for my bullshit. We, we, we thought I could be professional. I'm not. Just, nope. I'm your assistant director of SMUT, apparently. Oh, boy. So we talked a little bit about kind of the story of what brought us here. Do you want to go a little more into detail on that one? Sure, I guess. For a little while, at least at the start of the pandemic, who would have guessed, that's when I started doing TikTok because everyone was doing it and I was out of my skull. <laughs> so I started doing that and I got really into two TikTokers. It feels weird saying, but yeah, two TikTokers in particular, that being See You Later, who is... JC and CM Alonji, who is the creator of Cafe Latte. And JC was the, and currently is, the creator of Hell's Bells, which is a huge inspiration for me because that's the entire basis of the Devil's Desk. The entire thing is basically one big love letter to her stuff because Hell's Bells was so funny and also informative to stuff that even I was unaware of that I thought I was like, no, I. I think I know about this. It's like, I didn't know shit. But it's very informative, and it doesn't do it in a very condescending way. And the same thing with CM Along G is just instead of it being the Judeo Christian hell, it's the Fae and a lot of other mythical creatures kind of like coexisting in that. And it's just like, I, I love that. I love that. How people can still use like basis of, I guess, religion to kind of teach moral subjects or even just old fairy tales and beliefs. Yes, exactly that. Fairy tales and different belief systems and just show a good story and bring a bit more of a modern twist to it because there is the problematic stuff back then. Oh no, not a, no idea what you're referring to at fucking all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh yeah so see you later and see him along to big big sources of inspiration for me when it comes to the creation of the devil's desk and i've heard people say like dude you're just a rip off of uh so and so and it's just like well i mean you're not entirely wrong but i'm also not claiming that i like started this at all yeah jc might have kind of started the whole hell of going on on tiktok but let's be honest here you jordan a few others have taken it and just expand it on and you and jordan are probably the two best in that regard oh i thank you very much yeah and basically because i knew that myself i wanted to tell like an actual more like story arc as a uh, as opposed to just like dealing with a bunch of bratty souls coming into the underworld i wanted to use that as like a baseline to jump off of and show like hey i can make jokes at the very least hopefully help people forget how shitty the world is for like even just five minutes if it's just one person who gets any enjoyment out of it, I consider that mission accomplished. Well, and that's more or less what I think a lot of us have been trying to do is just, oh, hey, the world's shitty. Let's try to reduce that just a little. Just, a, just an infinitesimal amount. Like I said, you and Jordan are infinitely great at that. Would definitely love to drag her into this little project, but I'm pretty sure if I dragged her into this little project and it was the three of us doing this shit, we, we would get in so much trouble. Yeah, I can't even lie. I know us. We are going to be so disruptive. Oh. 
We are, but in the best way, because let's be honest here. What is it? I We'd have two of the devils of TikTok fucking on here. We'd have, oh gods, we'd have Nora and Hope on here fucking bringing all of that energy. Speaking of which, here's our necklace. Yes, it is just the Witcher medallion from the games, but I love the Witcher, so haha. <laughs> Mood, you've seen the shit I'm wearing and all I do. Fucking spikes out of my face, apparently. <laughs> oh, man. That's been a little bit of fun. Getting into the story of what actually brought you here, that was due to, ironically enough, uh, Nick, Christina's editor, who has been in contact with the two of y'all before and assisted with collaborations as well as video editing for y'all, inviting us all to a D&D game. Which I had never played before. It was the first time I ever played D&D, and let me tell you, it was interesting to say the least. <laughs> No idea what you're referring to. It couldn't have been that interesting, what, meeting not only a few new people, but also, turns out, a couple of these people are complete batshit. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we are crazy. Yeah, so, it actually started when I just made a post out of, I didn't even think that was going to get any traction whatsoever. I had offhandedly mentioned the Cafe Latte in one of my videos where I was complaining that people were putting up Christmas decorations in the middle of October. That drives me crazy. That drives me nuts. I hate that. But I had offhanded, offhandedly mentioned the Cafe Latte, and people asked me, like, are you referring to, like, Sam Alonji? And I'm like, come on, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. And she saw that video. She saw that video, and she basically said, yeah, I'm down to do a collab, and the following video, I'm just like I'm, I'm freaking out my heart's pounding out of my chest i'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god i can't believe it she actually saw the video and she wants to do a collab oh my god oh my god i'm just losing it i'm losing it and then eventually i get in contact with her and get in contact with nick and then get the video out and then nick invites me to play DD. and yeah here we are that's basically how i got started which i am so sorry for this i'm, I'm sure you're absolutely hating the fact that you are now stuck in yet another mix of mythology judeo christian bullshit oh how dare you drag me into another one hey at least this one's you know a supernatural detective thriller uh yeah I'm, i i always liked watching those when i was a kid so i can't say i'm too disappointed oh i mean i i wouldn't imagine you are this has been fantastic and like i said i will definitely send you uh the rough draft i'm sure i have at some point but i would send you the final draft uh yeah yeah, I, th I think you did send it to me as soon as I got buried under half a million freaking back and forth messages and all that, so I'd have to find Hey, let's be honest here. You're a busy guy. You have, you're working hard, you're taking care of things, and then you've got a fucking successful TikTok account, whereas the rest of us are just sitting here like, how the fuck did we land this asshole? Yeah, and in regards to table reads, like, it seems like most of them are done, like, in the afternoon, and like, that's when I work. I don't know when this is gonna work for me. Well, that's why you just gotta let us know, and we'll try to figure things out amongst everybody, because, like, worst case scenario, table reads might have to be done in a couple of different sections by that time, but goodness me, uh, if I were to actually check the events, we just did number two here at the beginning. Or uh, no, at the end of July, so that would be mean we're doing episode three sometime now. So three months from now would be about November. Hopefully by then things will be calm enough to try to get everybody to work together on a schedule that actually functions. I hope. I pray. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Toes too. Oh, goodness me. So, obviously you've done a lot of talking about your TikTok series, Devil's Desk, and how you are sarcastic sinner. We've talked a hell of a lot about what inspired you, what brought you to that. How would you describe the experience so far of being a well-known TikTok creator, of having that kind of following and fan base? Uh, it certainly feels like it's not real. Like, almost like a bit of imposter syndrome is going through, because it's just like, this is the kind of stuff I always dreamed of, like, as a kid. It's like, I'm, I, I, I always imagine... Oh, yes, I will be famous across the world, and people shall know my faith, but not always my name. And I'm just thinking, is this really happening, or did I get knocked out, or am I in a coma, and this is all some fever dream, because it feels like it's not real. And that's why I'm very appreciative of the support that I get, especially when I go on, like, hiatuses and all that. I get nothing but positive receptions people are always saying just take your time you're good we're here for you we're waiting and it's just i'm happy about that it it's very it's very heartwarming and just like encouraging it it's a way for me to express some artistic 
intention and desire and it's being received well. And that kind of stuff is not something I was always given by a lot of my peers growing up. So it's cool to see all these strangers like what I do, man. You you guys suck. You guys just sucked. Growing up, my peers had no appreciation for my talents and my desires. Every fucking arts person ever. Especially media arts. You you were definitely the, the fucking weirdo at school. Oh, I, I, I was also known as just the guy who just did not give a, pardon my French, did not give a flying fuck. I, I just told people how I saw it, and some people thought that was a breath of fresh air, and other people were like, this guy's a dick. I mean, yeah, you're a dick, but you're a dick in a good way. I'm lo- I'm what I like to call a lovable asshole. I'm an asshole, but you, c- you can see some. You can find the love in it. Oh, definitely can. It's what you see watching the entire series is just, you know, yes, you're an asshole. I mean, that's why it is uh, Lucifer is really the best show for all of your character and who you are. Which I guess uh, at this point, I might as well ask, what are your thoughts on Lucifer in this particular series from what you've seen of them? Or have you been able to really take a look yet? I got a tiny little glimpse and I think it's a I think it's a good take. Certainly a presence of authority in some areas, and also maybe a bit of tenderness that's, like, hiding underneath a little bit from what I've seen, but mostly just, like, I'd like to just see how it unravels, because there are so many different ways that you can create a Lucifer character, either the epitome of evil, or a bad boy that's just misunderstood, or in this case, bad girl, and... Just see what you can do with it. Are they really all that evil, or is there something else going on? Well, and with this, you actually will find there's a whole lot more going on when, not to spoil too much for folks, but we've got some scripts up that show that, no, nope, Lucy is not really the devil in this. Lucy is not the one ruling hell. Oh, boy. Mm. That's, that's going to make for some interesting table reads. Yeah. Uh, I And I know that it's like kind of like my job to read through the script so that I know what's going on. But I also don't like spoiling my because eventually I am going to I am probably going to want to like experience it firsthand just to like watch the episodes myself. But it's like, mm. oh, no, trust me. So a bit of a spoiler for you on this one without telling what's going to happen. But there is definitely something planned that no one knows about for much later in the series or much later in the season no one will get to know about until it actually comes up like y'all won't even get to see the script for it until table read time my character dies (laughs) no 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 no. this is Uh, this this is related to a character reveal oh oh, that's something Uh, oh yeah so we've gone through a lot of stuff was there anything else you kind of wanted to talk about anything that really came to mind or just Run our mouths for another 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I mean, running my mouth is basically the entirety of what I do. So, I mean, it wouldn't be too far off the mark for me. I guess I could say, like, another source of inspiration for me actually starting, like, actual video creation would probably be one of my favorite actors of all time being Sam Witwer, who, if any of you are familiar with him, he is actually... Star Killer in The Force Unleashed in The Force Unleashed 2. He was also on a couple episodes of Dexter, uh, Being Human, and he is the voice of Darth Maul in The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. And he is a massive geek. He's a massive Star Wars nerd, and that's how he actually got like the role for Star Killer when he first auditioned because he was he out geeked the director. He out geeked the director. Like he knew more about Star Wars than the freaking director. And they're just like, did did this guy just out geek Dave Filoni? And it's like, damn right he did. And he very much like he seems like such a sweet man. He he's such a a kind dude. He he very much like when he gets into a role, he's invested in. It. He's not just gonna read the lines. He's gonna put his entire soul into it. And that's kind of like what I want to do. I want to like do even half as good as that. We're definitely going to want to see you bring that sort of energy. <laughs> yeah. And I guess for when it comes to comedic inspiration, obviously Team Four Star, because I reference them all the freaking time. And to the point where people actually think that I work for them because I can do the voices so accurately, they actually think I am Takahata 101, which I am not. I am not Takahata 101. You can look up a picture of him. We look nothing alike. 
Not to mention, I'm not sure that you're really old enough. Of course I'm not old enough. When the first episode of <laughs> Helsing Ultimate Abro came out, I was nine. I was like nine or ten. Do you think I could bring my voice that deep? No. I sounded like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, no. Times like this, I get reminded exactly what the age difference is between the two of us. Oh, I, I, I'm i just a little baby. I'm a little baby. The beard is deceptive. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the beard is deceptive, but if I can make one small, tiny, itty-bitty, little bit... Please, for the love of God, never shave that fucking thing off. Oh, trust me. The missus is always... Oh, you look so good with the beard. I look like a mutant four-year-old. No, I, I'm i not doing that again. I have the beard on, not because it looks good. It's because I want to look my freaking age. I go into a liquor store, completely clean-shaven, and they're just like, What the fuck are they feeding this kid? <laughs> And I show them my ID, and they're just like, no way. You're not. You're not over 20. It's just like, yeah, I am. I really am. Trust me, it's a pain in the neck for me, too. I would imagine that's a pain in the neck. And I, I'm sure you did not get any love for your fans, who I, I have no doubts were just like, don't ever, don't ever do this again. You know, surprisingly enough, it was kind of 50-50. They were like, this is funny. And also, like, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. I'm like, trust me. It was just to, like, because my girlfriend wouldn't stop bugging me. Oh, you look so good clean shaven. Oh, you look so good clean shaven. It's just like, you just don't want me to scratch you. That's the only reason you want me to shave. He's like, this is scratchy. That's the only reason you want me to shave. There's an easy solution for scratchy. You just put conditioner in the beard. I used to do that back when I had one. And I am writing that down. Conditioner in beard. Okay. Definitely going to try that over the course of a couple weeks. A smart move. I would say do like I do with my hair. Just like leave it in after you're out. You don't have to leave too much, but just enough to help it soak in that uh, curly hair treatment for it. Kind of kind of mixed reception with the mixed beard, but everyone's just like, holy baby face. And it's just like, yeah, I know. I know. She wouldn't stop bugging me. I know. Uh, but I love her. I love her. Uh, and that's how it goes. I know how things have been. I know for a fact that even just this little bit of stubble from not taking care of myself in a day is killing me. But that's dysphoria for you. Issues I have no experience with, so I can't even comment. Honestly, I'm happy for you that you don't. You had said you wanted to put all of your heart and soul into this. I suppose that means that I need to at least bring up some of the stuff that me and John have mentioned in other places relating to probably about season two or three. We're going to start considering, well, not even really considering, uh, we're planning to get some spinoffs kind of put out. First one will be Bard relating to the Bureau for Anomalous Research and Defense, I believe it is, where we get Agent Black from. But then another one that I had brought up with him, which was sort of a prequel sort of thing while I was drunk and listening to Pirate Metal was the inspiration <laughs> is related to edward thatch or rather Hyar. i mean yeah but yeah related to edward thatch also known as edward teach also known as blackbeard and the idea of blackbeard being a werewolf pirate is there any interest in that potentially if we get that ball rolling i mean maybe i i can't see say definitely that i'm not interested it's just final result if people like my performance yeah i'll come back so i mean people will like your performance i, I can't see I, can't, I don't see entirely why not i mean i can guarantee you people are gonna like your performance the question is if we're gonna get enough people watching the series to actually i mean like we'll put this stuff out it's just can we actually get some people watching it i mean i'd like to be able to make a paycheck off of this at some point oh man wait you guys are getting paid no <laughs> No, this is this is completely 100% passion project. Oh, man. Hey, it's the same thing with me on TikTok. If I was making money out of this, I'd lose the I'd lose the drive for the craft. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the love of the craft. Well, I mean, to be fair, Christina's been able to do both pretty well, but she's also been able to get a lot of help from crew, from her Patreons, from so many other people. And that's kind of what we're likely to be doing is just we're putting out stuff with passion and we're hoping at some point we'll get enough money flowing in that everybody will be able to make a nice solid paycheck. And speaking of Christina, like, I just offhandedly made a suggestion. Hey, what if I made, like, t-shirts with a character from Cafe Latte and my, and my version of Lucifer just flipping the bird and say, saying, That's called Fey Magic, bitch! I saw that. Holy fuck, what did I do? Yeah. Wow! I, I saw the that. The amount of people just... Wah, that is not what I was expecting. That's the thing. I'm going to be grabbing my sketchbook here in a little while and actually trying to figure out, you know getting the lettering out, because I'm no good at drawing people. I'll leave that to core. 
because Core is, oh, I'm going to have to show you what Core has done for one of the characters in our series in Valmont. I've hired them to do uh, Chuckles. So I'll definitely have to show you what they've got so far. Oh, okay. But man, oh man, if we have Core design that t-shirt, you are going to get sales out in the ass. Not sure whose ass, but it's out somebody's ass. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I could definitely design the characters myself, because I already got like three little animatic videos. A couple of them I just sketched really quickly, so some of the character models look a little off. But there are some frames that are like, there are a couple frames that I am I am personally very proud of, so I could probably design them. I think I've sent one to you. Wait, no, I sent it to, to Jordan. It's uh, one where Lucifer and Nora are actually like all cuddled up, all cutesy and all that. It's just... You definitely got to send it to me now. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can actually... Take your time. It can be done after this. Sometimes the file size is usually a pain in the neck, but it should be there in like... I mean, just spit on it. It'll fit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Has no power here. Unfortunately, this is my realm and I'm queen bitch. Okay, so we've had a nice long discussion, and we kind of discussed ahead of time that, you know, aside from TikTok, there's really no place else for anybody to be able to follow you. So your TikTok is Sarcastic Sinner 666 with the Devil's Desk series. Is there anything coming up that you want folks to know about? Not really, but I'm thinking of maybe starting like a kind of like pseudo podcast type thing on maybe TikTok or maybe even starting a Twitch channel where I just talk about random stuff that happened throughout my day and different things that I have planned for possible future Devil's Desk episodes and just a bunch of random stuff that might be going through through that I like to bitch about. Well, I know John mentioned uh, starting up a podcast format for kind of discussing some more taboo topics. So if that ever gets started up, I'll let you know as, you know, something for you to join in on, as well as we can probably bring in other ideas just to keep it going. Cool. But it has been an absolute pleasure to speak to you, Riley, and it's been an absolute pleasure to introduce you to the fans. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here. Oh, you don't have to lie to me. I know that I'm an absolute pain in the ass. <laughs> well, at least you're self-aware. <laughs> Much like any good Lucifer. <laughs> oh, I know I'm an ass. You don't have to tell me twice. I mean, you are an ass, and you've got a great one at that. Oh, why, thank you very much. Oh, boy. <laughs> you're more than welcome, darling. And remember, everybody, don't let the vampires bite. Got to get one more dig in there. <laughs>